Hello, I'm Jared Brenner. And I'm Kate Ben. And today we're going to be annotating and analyzing The Caller by George Herbert. So, enjoy. I struck the board and cried, No more, I will abroad. What? Shall I ever sigh and pine? My lines in life are free, free as the road, loose as the wind, as large as store. Shall I be still in suit? Have I no harvest but a thorn to let me blood, and not restore what I have lost with cordial fruit? Sure there was wine, before my sighs did dry it, there was corn before my tears did drown it, is the year only lost to me? Have I no bays to crown it, no flowers, no garlands gay, all blasted, all wasted? Not so, my heart, but there is fruit, and thou hast hands. Recover all thy sigh-blown age, on double pleasures leave thy cold dispute of what it is fit and not, forsake thy cage, thy rope of sands, which petty thoughts have made, and made to thee good cable to enforce and draw, and be thy law, while thou didst wink and wouldst not see, away take heed. I will abroad, call in thy death's head there, tie up thy fears, he that forbears, to suit and serve his knee, deserves his load. But as I raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word, methought I heard one calling. Child! And I replied, my lord. So now that you've heard the poem once, like without uh, focusing on just like taking it in and, and stuff, now we're going to go into the, the analyzing of it. So what we did, it's a very old poem, so we um, translated sort of roundabout line by line, so... I'm just going to explain that first. Okay, so I struck the board and cried, no more, I will abroad. It's like him saying, oh, uh-uh, I am done with this. No, I'm no more. I'm going. Next, what shall I ever sign pine? Uh, pine means like to, to miss something if you're away from it or to miss someone. Um, so he's basically saying like, what, like would I even miss this? Um, Next, my lines are, and life are free, free as the road, loose as the wind, as large as store. If I ditch this, if I leave leave whatever he's leaving, I'm just going to be so free and so flippin' grand and amazing. Um, shall I be still in suit? Is it better to just um, bear through like being trapped and like and not be able to do what I what I want and be free? Um, have I no harvest but a thorn? to let me blood and not restore means means uh do i not have anything more to offer than like this this thing that this thing that i'm entrapped in um whether it's a a job or what um what have i lost with cordial fruit um what like significant thing am i am i actually losing by by leaving this thing and cordial fruit um is another word for like um, a fruit liquor, which which in this case is wine. Um, so based on the the title collar and the cordial fruit, we're kind of assuming that that um, this is a religious situation. So maybe he's a with the collar, he's a priest. So that's what he's trying to be free from his priest job and religion as a whole. Um, Sure, there was wine, but before my sighs did dry it, there was corn before my tears did drown it. He's saying, oh, this this occupation, which we now know as being a priest, it was all right. There, it was fruitful for me um, until I realized it was like it was completely toxic and making me um, go insane. <clears throat> is the year only lost to me? Means um, times ago and by, and I just gotta be passive about it that that kind of sucks i want to do something with my life and be restricted to this this one occupation i want to do more um have i no bays to crown it no flowers no garlands gay all blasted all wasted it's basically saying like can i not be more than this like maybe even royalty um that's what uh like garlands and crown are, are like royal uh garments <clears throat> Not so, my heart, but there is fruit, and thou hast hands. As him basically saying, well, maybe not r quite royalty, but I do want to be free from this and maybe be something more. 
um, recover all thy side blown age on double pressures. All right, enough is enough. I'm I'm getting myself together and I'm I'm leaving. Um, leave thy co cold dispute of what is fit and not uh, moral schmorals. I don't really care what's what's if it this isn't wrong. I think it's right for myself, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Um, forsake thy cage, thy rope of sands. Um, I'm I'm gonna be free. I'm finna be free. <laughs> Which petty thoughts have made and made to thee, because this has taken a toll on me, uh, good cable to enforce and draw and be thy law. I mean, like, how, how does this, this, th this idea of religion and being a priest, like, so, so toxic to myself, but it helps and guides so many people, and it's so prominent in the world. I don't know. Uh, why thou didst wink and wouldst not see? These people that that follow it um, trust it b blindly. Uh, away, take heed. Um, I will abroad. All right. Yep. I've decided. I, I'm done with this. I'm leaving. Call in thy death's head there. Tie up thy fears. Uh, all right. Bring on the consequences. I don't care what happens anymore. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. <clears throat> he that forbears to suit and serve his need deserves his load. Um, he's basically saying, God, if you're going to make the entire humanity serve you, you do the preaching yourself. We don't need no middleman. I'm going to do what I want. Um, but as I raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word, um, like in that quote, I was so certain and so angry and so passionate about this. I wasn't turning back i'm i knew for a fact i was going to be free but methought i heard one calling child and i replied my lord but then god called me so i can't leave now <clears throat> okay so um the speaker is uh someone obviously of a religious background or affiliation um and we can assume that because of the title and everything in it that um, it's a priest um, and then the um, occasion it was written in the early 17th century because uh, George Herbert lived around the late 15 and early 1600s um, he was a priest of the Church of England so this is probably uh, he could be the speaker or that's what gave him the influence to write this the audience were people of his time, or just really um, any people that could be listening, or you could even argue that it was himself, because he's kind of asking and isn't sure what to do or how to feel. The purpose is to, he's sharing his inner thoughts and his struggle with his religion and what's happening. The subject is the speaker's struggle with his faith throughout the whole thing. He's talking about how he wants to leave and he feels trapped by um, the, his faith. And the tone, he's very passionate and angry, but it's with no real threat behind it because in the end he ends up going right back. <clears throat> 